Hello everyone, welcome back to the Nerds Ascending. Today is episode four. We are back to talk about DC, the DC Extended Universe. Um, I'm your one of your co-hosts, Adam, and my other co-host is Matt. Uh, thank you for joining us again today. We're going to be talking from Man of Steel to Batman v Superman to Justice League, Wonder Woman, Suicide Squad, Aquaman, and Shazam. And we'll be talking about both Justice Leagues in this one to compare the Zack Snyder one and the Joss Whedon one. So stay tuned for our discussion. So the first film, obviously, we're going to discuss is Man of Steel, which is Henry Cavill's first appearance as Superman. So yep. first question is, what is your opinion on Henry Cavill being Superman? I love Henry Cavill. Do you think um, he was the perfect fit for it? Yeah. Obviously, he has his uh, critics about the way he sometimes he plays Superman. Yeah. But I don't think there's looking out into the wider scope of actors. I don't think you'll find a better actor to fit the role. Um, I agree. A lot of the issue is the direction and the writing that comes across from it. But Henry Cavill was just perfect for, for the role. Yeah, this is necessarily about Man of Steel, but do you feel he's been treated very badly within the whole DC um, yeah. company? Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. Yeah. And so. There's a lot of standout moments in this film for me. Um, what would you say is your maybe top two scenes from this film that come to mind? Top two scenes. Probably when he first starts flying. Yes. Because um, I actually think they do the flying anime. I always think when you think about the Superman films, they struggle to get the flying right. Yeah. Um, but I think they actually they nail in this one. Um, so I just, when that happens for the first time in the film that really just stand out and the battle obviously in Metropolis where they're just destroying the city yes. just going through it smacking buildings I absolutely just think that's a brilliant scene yeah well, that scene shows the extent of they don't care about humanity they're there just about yeah. they're just there to kill each other uh, obviously you Superman obviously by the end of the film learns a bit of uh, humanity himself when he starts to realise what he's yeah. done and the destruction stuff so obviously this has a lot of good cast members as well. So obviously we spoke about Henry Cavill, but what did you think about like Lawrence Fishburne, Amy Adams, Kevin Costner, Russell Crowe? What about them people? I thought uh, Kevin Costner and Russell Crowe, as both of his parents, friends, father figures, yeah. were uh, they're just massive cameos, but they're good. Like, yeah, it's yeah, really, yeah. It adds a lot of star power to the film. Um. And like you say, Lawrence Fishburne had the same sort of similar in anything that he's in. Kevin Costner, obviously more so than Russell Crowe, as the, his father was a really good casting, I think. Like the scene where he got taken in the storm, you actually felt that scene. Oh, God, yeah. Um, and you felt like a good uh, father-son chemistry between Henry Cavill and Kevin Costner. Russell Crowe is obviously... Mainly just there for the star part, so you can't really talk too much about him. Yeah, because he appears at the start and then he's dead, and then he's just yeah, sort of narrating exactly. on the ship later in the film. So yeah, exactly. But no, Kevin Costner's really, really good. So and, did, uh, you... Was he, did you say Amy Adams as well? She's, she's yeah, yeah. good as um, she's Lovely. really she's good in it. I actually quite like. I don't normally like the damsel in distress sort of persona, mainly because of MJ and Spider Man films. Yes. <laughs> um, but I think Lois Lane's really good in the Man of Steel film. Yeah, so do you feel maybe that star power maybe overcomplicated the budget and stuff for this film, hence why it's not a sequel since? Yeah, yeah I get that. I, I don't understand that. I must say it's um, an issue, but maybe Warner Bros. may have looked at it like these are huge yeah, actors no, it, if we want to bring it back into it. So. Yeah, exactly. That coupled with the obvious, everyone demanded Batman. And as soon as we brought Batman into the sequel, everyone's like, right, well, there's only... You sort of forget about Superman. He doesn't have great villains anyway, to be fair. That's that's always been the biggest issue with Superman. Yeah, well, you've got Lex Luthor and you and Zod. Once those two yeah. have been used up, that's it. Um, and they use Lex Luthor in that in the way to get him with Batman. So I feel like, but we'll talk about that later. Talk yeah, about we'll talk about later. next. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so where would you? Obviously, we'll talk about all seven of them at the end. But where do you see this as one of the? Do you see it as one of the best DC films? One of the worst? Uh, is I it do. overhyped? I see it as one of the better ones. Um, obviously, it was the first actual film in the extended universe. Yes. For DC. And 
I just I just liked how it was just it was it was a simple plot. And I think okay. that's where the DC universe ends up complicating itself. I agree because they started off so, as you said, so well with Man of Steel. They built such a good ground, like Iron Man. They had a good start. Yeah. They knew where they were going, and then they made Batman v Superman. Exactly. I'm not saying it's a bad film, <laughs> but no, yeah, they just massively overcomplicated. You should have made a Batman film next, and you know, yeah. go from there. You, you you start uniting people after they've had the solo films. Exactly. But I you don't. Think the Man of Steel was a good perfect start, and they just yeah. messed it after that. No, I completely agree. And so, obviously, Zod is played by Michael Shannon, an actor I actually know nothing about. Did you think he was a good caster for Zod? Yeah. Uh, pretty prior to the rod, I didn't really know anything about him, uh, to be fair. But I thought he did a really good job. And he portrayed the personality perfectly. Of yeah. The warrior type. He's fed up of everything. Like, when he overthrows the planet. Yes. I think he, he, sort of really, he's, he comes across as sort of a relatable villain. It's on the planet, not on yeah. Earth. Yeah. But no, he's, on yeah, Krypton, he does. Yeah, that's why it's such a good film as well, because it sort of grounds every character, gives them a good backstory, mm. a, a reason for why they're doing everything. And yeah. um, do you feel it was justifiable to kill him off? Yeah. I thought the way that they went about that entire fight scene in Metropolis gets overlooked. And he had to, the only way to stop him was to kill him. Yes, like, I agree. He would just not stop yeah. to no end. Yeah, you have to kill him. And I, I obviously you hear the next snap in that scene. Yeah. The, and it was a really it was a really good scene, actually. It is, and then when when Cavill starts screaming, it's just like yeah. Jesus, you can tell how much pain he's in and yeah, how much he didn't exactly. want to do it. Um, so obviously, as you mentioned, the fight of my um Krypton at the start. So what was your thoughts on that? I thought it was really good. Um I would have liked to see more of the whole Kryptonian civilization. Mm. Uh, I would like to have seen more of his father, more of the civil war that started because well, it wasn't really civil war; it was just slaughter at the end of the day. Yeah, but um, I would have liked to have seen more background on that because it was a really good intro to the film. And like yeah, it was. He grounds on as a relatable villain. Yeah, it threw us right into the story. It was like destruction, get Man of Steel, Superman onto Earth. Yeah. And get the story going. It was a good. Um, it was a good flow of the film, I think, because it was about two hours and two hours yeah. plus to film. Yeah, so. it was. There was no like slow points in the film. It just it, it needed to do what it needed to do. That's why I yeah. thought Zack Snyder is a good director for it. I think Zack Snyder's DC. You know, when you think of Kevin Feige from Marvel, I think Zack yeah. Snyder is the DC guy. Yeah. 100%. Um. So my last thoughts on the film is: What did you think on the suit in comparison to the original suit we got in the seventies? I love it. Yes, I, so really, I, I do too. So. I mean, it it is mainly to show Henry Cavill's body off. Well, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's what the Superman suit is. Yeah. But I just think it's a really nice suit. I just think that like they changed they changed it up a bit. They made it a bit shiny, a bit more. I just thought I thought it was for the way that they were going to take this universe. It was a perfect suit that could last. Yeah, I think it was a lot better because if you look at the seventies suit. It's light blue. It looks cheesy. old. Yeah, yeah. cheesy. Uh, but this one, it looks darker. It looks more... Exactly, because it is... The thing is, Superman suit is literally spandex and a cape. Yes, exactly. So the, the way the, the design department made it look not stupid. Yeah, exactly. I agree. So it was, I thought I really did like the suit. Yeah. So is there anything else you want to add to our discussion of Man of no, Steel? No, I was going to add the suit, but then you added it at the end. All right, cool. <laughs> right, um, <laughs> so that's our discussion of Man of Steel. We're going to jump into Batman... Um, versus Superman in just a minute. So the next film we're going to talk about is Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. This was the sequel to Man of Steel to bring Batman and Superman together. And it's the first time we saw Ben Affleck step into the suit after Kristen Bale was the last Batman. So what are your thoughts on Ben Affleck? Because he got a lot of hate. He did. And I actually really like Ben Affleck. Was it after um, that film or are you starting to like him more now? It was after, it was directly after the film. Okay. Um, obviously, there are. It's not the strongest film. It'd probably be last or second last on the list. It's a bit messy, I think. So. Yeah, but I I really like Ben Affleck. I think he's a perfect Bruce Wayne. Yes. He's built like Batman, but he's perfect Bruce Wayne. And I just wish that they'd given him that film. The ba- obviously, I'm oh, looking yeah. forward to Robert Pattinson, but 
I just wish they'd given Ben Affleck his own film to show how good he could have been. And that would have avoided so much hate. No, I agree. Because I think, like I obviously mentioned Kristen Bale, I think, you know, he was decent as Batman. He was better Batman, sorry, than Bruce Wayne. But you yeah. look at Ben Affleck, he, is, he could do both. Not many yeah. people could do both roles no. and just pull it off to the exactly. extent that he they was, do. He was literally so good as Bruce Wayne, but obviously he didn't get to see too much of it. No, and I wish, like you said, he should have had this film to himself and then they could have faced off against Superman yeah. uh, later on. But DC obviously decided to rush things straight away for no reason. Um, I think so... it's complete with the Avengers. I think they brought out Batman for Superman to compete with the Avengers. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's what it was. Yeah, it was the same year as Civil War, wasn't it? Civil War, that was it. Yeah, so it's like that was it. Yeah, but Civil right, Civil War was based off eight years of building. This has been yeah, built exactly. off three years. It's the executives that have messed up, but oh that, yeah, absolutely. I, I, it, I think it, yeah, I thought it was the Avengers or Civil War. It's one of the two. Yeah, well, Age of Ultron came out year before then, and then Civil yeah. War was so because it was aimed to compete with that, which was just stupid. But yes, <laughs> it's what it is. Um, so a couple of things I wasn't huge on that I obviously know you agree with is obviously the Lex Luthor storyline. Jesse Eisenberg yep. is a fantastic actor. I want to put that out there. But Lex Luthor was portrayed quite quite atrociously, I'd say. Yeah. Um, obviously, I I won't put any of it down to Jesse Eisenberg. Absolutely. With, with the material he gets, he does a good job. But he, they just make him some sort of like weasel. I know yeah. Lex Luthor is a weasel character in Superman, but he's got something about him. He's powerful. He's. But at the end, they just make Lex Luthor the rich rich playboy idiot yeah in so and, and he just his motives make no sense it's only really at the end of the film where he's uh, is it the end credit scene when you see him yeah with manganello uh, dead yeah shot. yeah that's when you think ah i, I want to see this like lisa this is like if we should have had yeah in a superman sequel yeah but it's like we had to go through that to make him good it's like yeah why did you just make him like that all the way for the yeah. film Exactly. He could have already had the yeah. motives, had the corporation, had everything. Exactly. It's, it's like Deadshot. Mess it up. Deadshot, Joe Manganiello is a fantastic actor again. And Deadshot had a lot of potential again, but they've ruined his character because of the direction yeah. of the DCU again. So I don't... Yeah. It's like they just don't want to have these good characters. I, yeah, I, I don't the, understand it. The biggest issue with the whole DCU, which is shown in this film, is the direction that they, they just want to rush everything yeah i agree and their issue was they wanted to rush everything but they've, they've not started out lex Luthor as, as who he is so they've gone like a million miles ahead yeah and Lex Luthor's <laughs> all the way back here and and if you're doing superman films and you mess up the one villain who's actually memorable hey, exactly <laughs> you're not you ruined it the issue is as well in this film they were tackling the whole you know lex Luthor wanting to get back at superman then yeah. you had batman try to deal with superman for destroying his company and then yeah. you brought Wonder Woman into it. You had Doomsday. It was like, it's like two yeah. and a half hours. You try to deal with like a million things coming in one yeah. place. So uh, another storyline, we obviously, I don't think we we agree on, sorry, we agree on is the whole Moth storyline, which yeah. sort of ended the fight scene. Yeah. I think this was the, when people walked out of the cinema, I think this was the biggest yeah, thing was... people were talking about. It was horrendous. It was horrendous. Like, who's Martha? It's like, what? Why do I keep saying Martha? Like, it, they could have ended that fight so much better. Like, well, they could have. Yeah, they pinned down to the floor, and all they had to do was, like, just stop. I don't know. Yeah. Just... If you literally just stood there over him with a good tonight's bit and just put it away and stopped and walked away, that would have been better than the whole yeah. Martha. <laughs> but instead, it, it, because he was getting pissed off because he thought he was offending his own mother. Yeah, and no, it was... Like... Um, it was so. It was such a stupid storyline. Again, that the whole you know when you watch Batman v Superman, you never think they're not going to fight each other properly, are they? Because in theory, Superman would kill Batman. Yeah. Uh, so, what was your thoughts on Kryptonite? Um, obviously, it was just lying ground in Lex Luthor's vault thing. Wasn't yeah, it? it was. This is another thing where they, they could have done it well. I think it's directly out of the a comic scene where Batman beats Superman with the kryptonite. But they just don't explain why Lex... There's just no need for the kryptonite. Exactly, because uh, why's Lex got it? In the eyes of this film, there's no need for the kryptonite. They could have exactly. explained it perfectly as to why it's got it. But they, exactly. just, they don't. And that is the issue of this film. It's just... 
Yeah, they're just rushing to get Batman versus Superman that there. I don't know why. Set up Justice League. Because when I was thinking of a first Batman film, I wasn't thinking, oh, Batman v Superman straight away. I was thinking, give me a Batman film. But yeah. Um, so, what was your opinions on obviously Gal Gadot was Wonder Woman being introduced again? Another storyline that was thrown yeah. in there. So, what was your thoughts? No, I really like Gal Gadot. I'm sure we'll touch on her later. Yes. I just don't think it was very necessary to put in this film. Yeah, again, because I'll keep going back to Batman v Superman, but then you're throwing in Wonder Woman, who's even stronger than Batman. So it's like... Yeah, there was just no need need for it. It was a nice... If it was a cameo, if they didn't plan to do, introduce into the Justice League, all these other films, then fair enough, it was a nice cameo to add. Yeah, but she was doing... giving her her own thing. Yeah, she was doing the things, you know, at the party when Bruce saw her. That was yeah. a good build up, and then she then appears in obviously later on down the road in a sequel or something. Yeah, which... but they just directly introduced her after that, so there's no need for it. Yeah. See, the more I reflect on this film, I I actually do really like this film, but the more I think about it, there's a lot of issues with it. It's, yeah, <laughs> and that is the issue. I like to keep the idea that I like it. It's not a hor- It's not a horrible film. I sit there and I'll happily watch the film. Yeah, it's a good watch. It's just yeah, there's a lot of it. You just have to blur out all the issues. I think. Yeah, exactly. Um, so obviously the big bad of the film is Doomsday again. Uh, I can't, how did he get introduced again? I can't actually. He remember. just comes in at the end of it, uh, just out of nowhere, and in the storyline. Uh, oh yeah, we get about five seconds of him out of nowhere, and he kills yes. Superman. Uh, again, what was your thoughts on Superman dying? Because I, I, I thought they could have done that. Really, I think it was a good way to end the film. Mm. The issue was again with the DC. They've ended it on killing Superman and he's back straight away in the next film. Yes. There's well, like no a, a, point. I know. It's like he's an alien. He's this, he's the strongest guy. They're always going to go back and bring him back to life, aren't they? And it's just... They could, yeah, they could have killed him, done a Wonder Woman film, a Batman film, all the, all the members of Justice League film, then brought him back about five films later. Yes. And his effectiveness goes up. But they've killed him in the next film. He's back. <laughs> it's <laughs> and nice. there's just no need. If you like Tony Stark coming back. Yeah, but like, oh, I've got to clip my fingers. I'm dead. It's yeah. like, oh, I'm back in there. It's, it's, it's just... no sense. And it, it really annoys you because I really like the idea that he gets killed in it. But Yeah, but what I'd say is if it was a bit further down the line, they could have killed Bruce off in that scene. Yeah. You can't bring Bruce back. I mean, no. You probably could have if they did the same technique as Superman, but it's more realistic, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, so another big thing about this film is they actually did the backstory on um, Thomas and Martha Wayne, and it was played by Lauren Cohen and Jeffrey Dean Morgan. So what was your thoughts on that scene? I, obviously, uh, it's like sort of like the Spider-Man, oh, everyone knows what happens with it, you don't yeah. need it. But they've got Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Thomas Wayne here. What is <laughs> if they did the Flashpoint films and they did the Thomas Wayne going to Batman? Oh, yeah, yeah. You get a Jeffrey Dean Morgan. You keep that, because that was amazing. Yes. Just seeing him in that role was class. I wanted to see more of it, because I love Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah, well, there's been a lot of fan posters, aren't there, and fan theories about him yeah. possibly appearing in Flash. I mean, I don't think he's going to appear in Flash anymore, because they've changed the script about a million times. Yeah. But he does look the part and would look amazing <laughs> as it's so... He's really good, and they could do, they could have done so much with that. I was so excited when I saw him. I think it's amazing because both characters are from Walking Dead as well, so to yeah. see them to become Batman characters is just really cool. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, one of the other scenes is the tie between Man of Steel and uh, Batman, when, obviously, Zod and uh, Superman are destroying Metropolis, and Bruce saves the kid, but his company yeah. dies. So what yep. was your thoughts on the whole tie-in set scene? I thought that was the perfect way to tie it. They set it up so well. Yeah, I agree. It's the why he hates Superman. He destroyed his building, almost killed him. Like, chilled. It's so it's such a good way to set it up. And they, 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 they set up a platform for it. And I just think that could have worked alone without Lex Luthor doing what he yep, did. I agree. I think the issue was because I think Superman needed a motive to kill Batman. Yeah, yeah, that or, was the issue. They needed the return motive, but I don't know why Batman could just kind of kick the crap out of Superman and Superman just retaliates. Just yeah, exactly. And it's just a back and forth. They could have done that. Yeah, but they but... just and then obviously no, um, I'm not talking about Lex Luthor anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the more it annoys me. I'm... 
Uh, I think that's about it that I can think of about There's this film. There's not really too much to say about the film. But what we will say is, is there anything that was a highlight from this film that you actually look back fondly on when you think of this film? Ben Affleck, uh, Jeremy Irons as Alfred. Of course, yeah. Uh, I thought he's really good. And like I said, I, there are a lot of things from the film. Like you've got the armoured bat suit. That's yes, really good. I do, I, I do like that. The whole idea around that was really good. Um, Emery Cavill's good again. The acting isn't bad in this film. There's no, no there's the no acting's bad brilliant. acting. Yeah. The screenwriting's the issue. Yes. So there are, there's a lot of good acting moments in this film. Yeah, I agree. And um, I just wish they could have made a more better film for fans because fans, I think, stopped watching DC films after this film because yeah. they ruined it, everything. It was the second film in the DC franchise and it was the one that derailed it. <laughs> yeah. When did Suicide Squad? Oh, Suicide Squad came out the same year as this, didn't it? So, mm-hmm. so yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> anyway, next, we're going to talk about Justice League, the 2017 one and the 2021 one. So stay tuned for that. So now we're going to talk about Justice League, the first film we get to see Cyborg, Flash, Aquaman, Batman, Wonder Woman and Superman unite it's on the big screen together. There was obviously a 2017 version, which Zack Snyder began with, but then Joss Whedon took over. And then Zack Snyder did his cut in 2021. So we're going to talk about the comparisons between the two and which one we prefer. So first off, what are your thoughts on the first one and what are your thoughts on the second one? A rating out of five, if you could say it. Out of five. So the first one I'd give two. Okay. And the Snyder Cut, I'd give it a three or four. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, and so, do you see a massive difference in these films? There, there is a massive difference. In quality or just content? I know I only gave the Snyder Cut three or four, but there's a massive quality difference. I feel the, the gap between the two and the three and four for me, yeah. that I've given the films, is huge. But... Right. So... The first thing I want to talk about, this is going to be out of order for anyone who's watching. The big thing that everyone wanted from the Zack Snyder cut was the black Superman suit. So what yes. were your thoughts when he finally put that suit on? That was one of the main things about me me liking that film. Yeah. More than the other. Um, I loved it. I think but so I think it's been coming. You, you when you have superhero films and you see it so much in Marvel, you have to do you, every film you have to go with this go through the suits yes and and it is it is just what it is it, is it a marketing tool i don't know but superman's black suit is arguably as iconic as his blue suit there it is i, I loved it when he first put it on i was like i yeah. understand why people want to see it now yeah because he and, he, and they, they do it really well yeah really really well they do it and it is one of the highlights of the snyder cut for me yeah, I think that's probably one of, yeah. Um, that and obviously the scene I love the most was when Flash saves um, the entire town. It's, yes. it's a massive step up from what they did in the original film when he just saved the, that one family in the car. Yeah, it is a massive step up. And I'm glad they did it because I think Ezra Miller is really good. Yeah, he is. Flash. He's so I'm so excited for his film. Um, I'm glad they're giving him that film because he was so good. Um, he was what even in the original, he was a standout character. Yeah, I agree. Um, he was he was just, I think he encapsulates Barry Allen perfectly. And I just, I'm just glad that in the in the Snyder Cut, they gave him a more prominent thing to do. Yeah, well, they gave him that. They gave him more backstory, like when he was working yeah. at the um, the uh, animal shop. Yeah, uh, when he saved that girl in the street, they just gave him more to do. And I think it was the same with Cyborg. Cyborg yes. had the least amount to do in the first film. No, uh, he, was, he was severely shafted in Joss Whedon's cut. Yeah, because one, he has no film. Two, he was barely getting any scenes. So how could you relate to a character you physically do not care about? Yeah, so, that was the issue of it because they sort of made... The way they both, both directors went about the Justice League, and I think it was Cyborg was the most important sort of member yeah, in the and- film. It's like, you, why should we care about that, though? Yeah, the and thing. in the first film, in the first one, you're like, 
okay, he's done it. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I know. In this article, they give him, they do flesh him out a lot more, ironically. But yeah, yeah, well, they go more into the whole box storyline, don't they? Of and they actually yeah. go to Aquaman's um, what's Aquaman's location called on the ground? Atlantis. Yeah, so they go to Atlantis. Yeah. Don't they they go to Wonder Woman's home world. They go Not, to all these places. The boxes, yeah, yeah. They actually show like twenty minutes in each area, like proper character developing and give a bit more backstory on people. So, um, obviously, another big thing in the film was obviously the suit upgrade for um, Steppenwolf and the actual yes. CGI improvement. Yeah. So what did you think about that? I think it does wonders for the character. In the original, he was awful. Yeah. Now, was... seeing the comparisons, it was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I I like Steppenwolf and Dark Snyder's cut. Um, they make the way that... I think he's the one who gets the biggest upgrade from the standard... Yeah, I agree. Really, cinema release. He gets the suit upgrade. You sort of feel like he's in a desperate situation because he's got now a big bad residing over him. Yes. He's scared of. He's got... He is no longer just coming on this quest. Like, when you watch the original one, you're like, he's doing this for Darkseid, but they're not going to say that. Because there's just no... There's no need... Yeah, I think that was the issue with the original because you never saw yeah. Dark Side. No, it's like he's just gonna get no, killed. Yeah. yeah, there was no need for them not to introduce Dark Side into the cinema court, and it was a very weird decision not to. Considering Joss Whedon did the original Avengers film and he did it perfectly. Yeah, exactly. You'd think he'd do this perfectly as well. Yeah, and he just they missed the mark so much in the original cinema release for for Steppenwolf and the villainous side of it. And I think Zack Snyder does do a good job with that. Yeah, so obviously you talk about obviously Josh Whedon, obviously not including uh, Darkseid. Do you feel that Zack Snyder, because he would have done a two and a half hour film, he would have done a four hour film, Yeah. had he released it originally, do you think he would have still included Darkseid? Yeah, and that is why I give the Snyder Cut a three or four. Because you don't, I get that he didn't have time to trim the film down at four, and it was ended up being four hours. Yes, I just wish that they'd have that they would have made the Snyder Cut into a film. Yeah, same. Because you you are sat there for a lot of the Snyder Cut, like, come on now, this it is, is a long, it is a long yeah. film. And I just wish that they'd have given him the chance to actually go into the studio, trim it down, make it into the film that you made. Yeah, and I think it would have been perfect. No, I agree. I mean, it did so much to improve the film, so you got to give credit to that, yeah. I suppose. Um, so. What was what were some of your highlights from this film? Your main three highlights you can look back. So on. we've already touched on two of them. Yeah, Flash, so much better. Yes, uh, Steppenwolf is so much better. In fact, we've actually touched on all three. I like that they fleshed out the idea of him getting all the boxes. Yes, and I think that is one of the biggest things for me. And and I've already touched on Dark Side and the, getting the boxes. It just makes the film seem more important and relevant to what you're watching on the screen. Yeah, I get that, because in the first one, you didn't really understand what he was doing everything for, yeah. what the boxes had to do with everything. Exactly. Whereas in the new one, it established everything, and yeah, everything exactly. was actually mentioned and spoke about. Yeah. But, um, so, Darkseid's obviously featured in a few like flashback scenes, you know, fighting the old lanterns and the... Uh... Yeah, that was a really good scene, actually. So what did you think about that? Oh, I think it was really good, and I think that was what should have been in the original. Yes. <laughs> and that whole, the fight scene where you got the lanterns, you got Dark Side coming out, that was a really, really good scene. And I think it showcases the, it's like Thanos in, yeah. in Marvel. You need that sort of gravity to a character behind the scenes. Do yeah. your nose come in? That's why everyone's uniting in the Justice League. That's what the Justice League, that's why you need to unite all these heroes. You don't need to, to yeah. unite. Iron Man on his own could have beaten Steppenwolf in the original. To be fair, most of them could. Captain America would have kicked his ass. <laughs> Thor would have just absolutely just thrown me on in everything. Yeah. There was no, there's no sense of impending doom with Steppenwolf. No, I agree. He is literally a step up. He's a stepping stone yeah. to Darkseid. Oh, absolutely. In the original court, because they completely missed that mark, you're like, 
Superman would literally, I know they had to bring him back. Yeah. But Superman would just, I know they do bring him back and he just wrecked him anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but when you bring Superman back in the original one, you, you don't need any of the rest of the Justice League. Yeah, but I think that's the biggest issue. That's my biggest issue with Justice League. For the whole original film, none of them were going to beat Steppenwolf. I, I mean, and the new one as well. Until um, Superman rocks up, they were never going to beat him. That's my biggest yeah. issue with Justice League. You watch Avengers, yeah, they, they're going to beat Ultron in some way. They're going to beat... Yeah. They'll find a way to beat Thanos. But in this, it's like they paved the way just so Superman could be the one to beat him. Wonder yeah. Woman is just as strong in some ways, I, I, you'd say. But yeah. I Wonder Woman you... is really... All the characters were good. <laughs> But it's like it's like we talked about earlier. The direction that they take it is, you know, that bringing Superman back to life in this film means that he's going to be the one to smash him up. Oh God, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> There's no in between about it, and it yeah. just takes away from all the other characters. And it's not Henry Cavill's fault. It's not any of that. It's just the way it had to be because they they brought him back in the Justice League. Like yeah, I, I said, agree. they, sh- they yeah. should have had before this film an Aquaman film, a Wonder Woman film. In the all flash, the types of films, yeah. and then you're like, no, this character could beat them. But in the end, all we're seeing is Batman recruiting all these people. Yeah, it's just. So what I'm saying is like, if you if, if you had never watched a comic book in your life, read it, sorry, I read a comic book in your life, you'd be like, who is Cyborg? Who is Flash? Exactly. That obviously, is the issue that they do. Yeah. Yeah, everyone knows who Batman is. Everyone knows who yeah. Superman is. And then obviously we've got a bit of Wonder Woman, obviously. So you'd start to think, why should we even care about having Cyborg and Flash as part of this team? Yeah. So, exactly. and that come on. That's not that. Jason, <laughs> sorry. Well, Jason, sorry. I'm saying that because Jason Momoa is unreal. That come on, no, don't get me wrong. I, I actually love what he's done for that role. Um, but again, he's forgettable in that film because, because yeah, because it's all not, about bringing his man back. Yeah, his film is excellent after, but if you put yeah. that before Justice League, you don't go into the film. People go into the film caring about the characters, yeah. People are like when Batman recruits Aquaman, you're like, oh my god, he's getting him because it because you know who he is. People don't yeah. really know who Aquaman is. People don't really know who Cyborg is. Yeah, but the thing is, you think of Aquaman, you know, as a stupid guy from the comic books with blonde hair and uses a bit of a piss yeah. take. You look at Jason Momoa's Aquaman, you think, wow, the guy's hench, the guy's strong, the guy's yeah. this, that, the other. So you look, you get a different perspective on him. Exactly. What I'd say is, what Marvel, you know, how Marvel obviously had Hawkeye and Black Widow as their Avengers people. They put them in films before Avengers, so you get yeah, used to them. That's what exactly. these should have done, at exactly. least. Exactly. You got so. Black Widow in the Iron Man films. You got uh, obviously Hawkeye in, in Zim Four. Yeah, so you get to see a bit of what they're about. Yeah, they they really the the way they went about like I like we said, but they just rushed it out. They just yeah. they were trying to compete with the MCU, and they weren't going to do that. They could have played the long game, and not, around about now they'd have been smashing it to pieces. Yeah, that's the issue because this Justice League I love, but. It's a bit too late. It's yeah. because they're not doing the Snyder Cut now. They're not going to do the Snyderverse. Sorry, not going to do Snyderverse. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. So it's... They've messed it up, yeah. Yeah, but it's a shame. hopefully, with the future, you got Black Adam, you got the sequels coming out. Yeah, they've but could... it's like... I get the sequels, but it's like we're already out of, like, disjointedness. It's like... Apparently, the yeah. Flash film is meant to tidy things up, but it's... Luckily, they have a Flashpoint storyline to do where they can... Just rectify it all. Yeah, that is, and I hope they do because I, I <coughs> personally prefer DC to Marvel. See, I've always preferred it's... Batman, but I think the MCU's just ran so much better. It has. Everyone agrees. Yeah, I've always preferred the, the DC universe because it's darker. What you feel, yeah. and that is one thing that I've always like. You feel consequence in the DC universe. Yeah, well, if you die in the Marvel universe, you, you just come back. Yeah, most of the time. In, well, yeah, unless Superman in this franchise, then you do come back as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, I hope they recover it. I do because it, it, Justice League was awful. I want to see another Justice League film. Yeah, same. And the last thing I want to touch on is obviously the, what would have been a setup for Justice League Two, and that's the Martian Manhunter appearing at the end. Yes, I thought that was a really good way to a yeah. really good introduction. And um, it's just a sad case of too little, too late, and too far gone. I know it's like he put it in there hoping they'd see it like, oh, I've set yeah. up the next film, give me a chance. Mm-hmm. But it's like, no. 
So Green Lantern was obviously meant to be in that scene. Who would you have preferred? Well, like... Because apparently what? Green Lantern was meant to be in that scene instead of Martian. Oh, instead of Martian. Yeah, I would prefer Green Lantern. I love Green oh, okay. Lantern. Right. I sat there on the, on the other week with my Green Lantern shirt on. I absolutely <laughs> love the character. Really? Yeah. It's a, okay. it's a weird, weird affinity I have for the character. I actually quite... The Ryan Reynolds film is awful, but I quite like it. So, yeah, I don't recommend watching it, but... I've never I, seen I it, to be fair. Hal Jordan's a great hero. Um... They need to do a Green Lantern film and get him out there. They were meant to, weren't they, in a couple of yeah. years, but I think it got cancelled again. The Green Lantern core film, yeah. They need, they should do it. It's a really, really good hero. Yeah, but I guess I'll have to see what happens with the universe. Cause... Exactly, because it's, yeah. it's up in the air at the minute. Exactly. Uh, anyway, that's our talk on Justice League. Is there anything else you want to add? No, not right. too much about this. So we'll jump into Wonder Woman next. Right, so now we are talking about Wonder Woman featuring Gal Gadot in her first feature film, standalone film. And so, yeah, what do you think about this film? This feat, this obviously takes place in the first, Second World War. Oh my God. Um, I'm not too, I can't actually remember, to be fair. <laughs> I think it's First World War. I oh, know it's. Uh, uh, yeah. It's in one of the wars, anyway. I think. Yeah. Uh, it's not really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I went into this film with very low expectations. Was that because of Gal? Was that because of Wonder Woman? I think it was residue from Justice League, a bit of DC fatigue. I went yeah. into like. Mm-hmm. But positively, Gal Gadot does a really good job in this film, and. This whole film is what you really want from the DC universe. It sets up everything about the Amazonians. It sets up what the character should be. Something just happened in the flat, sorry. (laughs) It sets up what, I think it's a cat. It sets up everything that you want to see to flesh out the character that should have been before the Justice League film. And But I just think they should have released this before the Justice League film. Oh, I totally agree. Like, you look at the level of Man of Steel, like we spoke about, but you look at the level of this film, it's like, they knew what they were doing then. They had a couple of films where they're like, I haven't a clue what we're doing. And then they made Wonder Woman, they're like, oh, we're back on track now. Yeah. And then they lost track again. But, you know, yeah. It's, just... <laughs> it's, it's a really, it's a weird one because it's a really good film. It's like, I'd give it a nine out of ten. Yeah, uh, yeah. The theme's sick, the costume's sick, Ares as a villain's really good. I just feel like because of what we were going through, it's not actually, it's actually a discredit to the film to say that I didn't enjoy watching it because I did. I just think too little, too late again for the DC universe. Yeah, well, I think the issue is it's not just because of the film, it's trying to tie it back in with films that aren't that good. Like, yeah. Obviously, the main focus on this film is because there was a picture, obviously, of Batman v Superman, which shows her with the soldiers yeah. um, during this time. So it's trying to tie it back to films that weren't well received and you try to give them context. And it's like fans have already passed that point where they don't care about that film. Exactly. So focus on exactly. new storylines to give these characters credibility again. Exactly. Um, so obviously the main scene in this film I regard is the No Man's Land scene where she just blocks all the bullets and takes on all the soldiers. Oh yeah, it's World War One then. If it's No Man's Land, it's World War One. Oh it is. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And it's got a, it's got a loading door in it. Yeah, it's World War One. But yeah, that is the standout film scene from the film. Yeah, do you think it's got a massive message behind it, like the fact that she's a woman and she's just stepping yeah. onto this land and yeah, hundred percent and. And I think it's a really good, powerful scene. Yeah. Um, and she's really she's really good casting. Like, yeah, she actually is. You can't look at Wonder Woman now and not think of Gal Gadot. She actually is really yeah. thinking about back at it now, looking at that scene. She's really, really good casting for the character. DC is very good at that, in my opinion. You know, they've messed yeah. up in a couple of places, but you know, as the heroes go, they've cast Superman, Batman, and Woman the Woman perfectly, I think. Yeah. Do you know? I've not really put too much thoughts to that, but she is really, really good as a character. And that scene on No Man's Land, yeah, showcases um, Diana perfectly. Oh yeah, like the slow motion scene. It's like you get to see 
the costume properly and how she blocks bullets. It's so cool. Yeah. Um, so do you think, obviously I know there's Wonder Woman 2 now, but did you think there was a good future for this film? Yeah. Um, I thought it's that sort of little entourage where obviously they do kill off Steve Trevor in this film. Yes. Which um, obviously don't last long. It's a questionable direction, that, because I thought Chris Pine did a really good job. Yeah, I love I re- him as an actor. I think he's really good as actor. He's really good in Star Trek. He is. Well, um, I wouldn't have killed him off, I think, if you'd... But they obviously do have a future. They, they do have the sequel, which we'll talk about on another day. Yes. <laughs> uh, I have my opinions on the sequel. I think a lot uh, of people do. <laughs> <laughs> well... I think when you when you finish this film, you're like, I want to see more of her. Obviously, it ends with her. It's like a typical DC ending where she's walking out, despite the crime. They, yeah. They set it up perfectly. She's got a little good entourage. They do the time jump for the sequel. That was the biggest issue, I think, when you're going to bring in a sequel. It's going to be it's years later. This is World War One. Yeah, so it, what is it? 70? Yeah, about 70, 70 years later. Yeah. So, it's... so yeah, it's a strange one. But I really, I think it's a good film, and I think there was, there is a good future for the character. And I still, even though my opinions on the sequel, I still think there is a big future for Wonder Woman. See, I do and I don't because it's the whole thing. Yes, Gal has killed this role; she's amazing at it. Just, they just don't have a clue what to do with her. My issue is with these the DC characters; they create good characters, yeah. The storylines just don't match. Like I said, yeah, we we spoke about the films. They just don't know where to bring these characters. No, no, that's the issue. They bring all the characters to the front, and it's like they get to the front and they're just like big headlights on them, and they're just yeah. like, "What now?" So like I said this film was good, but was it good because it was a war film and ever a lot of people love war films? Was it good because Gal was chucked in a war film? It's like it's I've a seen... really strange one, to be fair. Yeah, well, have you seen Nineteen Seventeen, for example? Yes, yeah. the, the war film where it's all one shot and it's the two gents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you watch that yeah. film. That's I, I love that film. But that film was amazing because it's a war film. So you chuck Wonder Woman in that. That's why it was so good. There was no real story mm. to this film anyway. Obviously, you think he turns bad, the guy. Yeah, but... and I thought that was a good twist. And obviously, I love Irene Lupin. Yes. Um, but I get, I, I get that side of it. Obviously, Ares is a god of war. War as well, so yeah, but he dies in this. Around the idea of war. yeah, he gets, he get, he does get decimated in the fight scene, and I, I, I don't actually like the fight scene at the end that much. It was quite, think, it was quite short the fight one. Eh? Yeah, it was very short and it, it wasn't great CGI. Yeah, and it sort of pegs the film back a bit. But I get the idea that it's maybe only good because it's a war film. I understand that view. Don't get me wrong. Um, he's a great actor. Um, was it David uh, Thewis? Yeah. Um, but I just thought it was sort of random him turning bad, and he was trying to like was he like following Gal Gadot the whole time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, and he, and then he just ends up turning out to be Aries. Yeah. I mean, I like, the, sorry, what you want? I was gonna say you go the whole film thinking Ludendorff is Aries. Yes. You get you do all these intricate missions, and then it just turns out. Yeah, I, I have a lot of I have a lot of love for this film. Um, I particularly mainly the soundtrack. So, oh, I, so. I love the soundtrack when she starts yeah. fighting and it just comes on. It's just brilliant. Yeah. Um. So obviously there was another scene. I don't massively remember this character we discussed just before. This was Doctor Maru. Uh, obviously the one who's got like the poisonous poison. Yeah, uh, that's... face. What did you think about her involvement in the film? I think it's one of them that just adds villainous gravitas to it. I don't think she brings too much to the table as Dr. Poison. Oh, that's it, yeah. You can tell the name by the name of the character, like, it's just one of them villains. Yeah. Yeah, But again, that's the thing. This film could have been great if they made her the main villain. They didn't necessarily have to include... Yeah, because she was a good character. Yeah, they they didn't need to have Ares. Yeah. It's an issue. It's one of them things where you've got the villains that just dilute the plot. Yeah, it's like they have to include Ares to give someone who's just as strong as Wonder Woman yeah. instead of just being like, I don't know. Biggest, biggest issue with 
Superman films and Wonder Woman, other than Lex Luthor, is you're going to struggle to find someone who can match them. Yeah, I agree. I mean, like you said, Zod was the perfect match for Superman. Yeah. Uh, now he's dead. Obviously, they had to do with Lex Luthor. So, yeah, but you always find ways, like, Lex had the kryptonite. Um, yeah. Dr. Poison would probably have, I don't know, something that negates her. Yeah. The inventiveness of the villains is one of the main reasons why they do it. It's just, I think DC does tend to, like, bringing that to the front. Yeah, I think there's only Batman who actually has good villains, but obviously Batman's human, so that's why it's easily... Yeah, I'd argue that Batman has the best villains out of any superhero, not just, not let alone DC. Probably oh, I agree. Spider-Man villains. Yeah, him and Spider-Man are probably the two best, because they have so many villains. That's the best reason for yeah, them. Yeah, because a lot of the time, the villains make the hero. Oh, yeah. And I, and I think that's where a lot of these DC characters fall flat. Yeah, because the villains you just don't care for. There's no backstory. At least in Marvel, like even when it's weaker villains, they they do it right. They do it justice. Yeah, like, you got Iron Man one uh, with Obadiah Stane. He's clearly nothing. As what is it? Is it Iron Monger? He's called. You know? uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's clearly nothing in comparison to what is in the MCU. But they do it so well because oh, they I make agree. the villain clever. Yeah. Rather than just what they are, and that's the issue. Ares is clever in Wonder Woman. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, he's a great, like I said, he's a great actor. It's a great character, but in my opinion, they didn't necessarily need it, like I said. Yeah. But Wonder Woman is still one of the best DC films. There's just a couple of things I just think you maybe not have needed. They could have done a bit better. That's just all. So Um, so is there anything else you want to add to Wonder Woman? No. Um, Yeah, there's nothing else I... Yeah, so last thing I want to say is what were your thoughts on the whole connection between... Batman v Superman. Do you feel it was necessary or was just to tidy things up? I think it was more of a tidy up thing, right. tidy up device. Yeah. Um, actually, one thing I will say is I would this film would have been a lot better if it came out before Justice League. And I'm going to say it's about almost every film. Yes, I agree. Um, <laughs> it's timing of the films has been, the, been a big issue. Yeah, but, I think DC just needed a good tidy up, reorgan, mm-hmm. reorganisation of when films are released. And they could have had the perfect universe, just like MCU. Yeah. But no, they suffered. <laughs> anyway, we're going to talk about Suicide Squad next. So the next film we're going to talk about is the 2016 Suicide Squad movie. One that was not very uh, well received, you know, to say the least. Uh, this features Joker, Harley Quinn, and obviously the rest of the Suicide Squad, which we'll go into as the discussion goes on. So Matt... Let's have your opinion <laughs> on the film. <laughs> right, well, I've, I watched this film in cinemas and that was the only time I ever watched this film. Okay, so it's been five years since you've seen <laughs> the film. <laughs> so my memory is very vague on this film. I don't want to talk about it much. I, I really just like this film. Okay, right, so why do you hate it so much? I just think they missed the mark so much. They... they it's like um, Amanda Waller creating Task Force X is is good is a good thing. Suicide Squad is a good comic book arc. Yeah. You've seen with James Gunn's one this year that it can be perfected. It's it's brilliant. They just it's so bad. <laughs> Over that the that up. There's <laughs> just it's a mess and it. And it Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, at the time where you brought Justice League out, people don't like Justice League. You think, right, well, it can't be so bad. And then they bring out Suicide Squad. And it's just, it's, I don't understand how, and I'm, a lot of the anger comes from the Joker. I don't mind Jared Leto. Do you not? I, no, I I'm, like not, Jared I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying he's on the same level as he or whacking Phoenix, but I didn't mind him per se. Did you not? I hate... I love Jared Leto. I'm really excited to see him in Morbius in January. Yeah, same. Um, that's going to be a really good film. He looks perfect for the role. Um, they've, made, they've made the Joker into some sort of GTA 5 online <laughs> casino heist mice. It's just took a bit of face paint on a jacket. Yeah, <laughs> and a bit of bleak. And it's just... Oh my... The Look, best scenes in this film are the ones with Batman. There's not that many. 
Exactly. The end credit scene has Bruce Wayne in it. That's probably the best scene in the film. It's not in, in the film. Is Bruce Wayne in the post credit scene? Yeah, he, he gives uh, Amanda Waller, he said he'll protect her legally. Well, I, I can I tell I've never seen that. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to say is right. Look, Jared Leto, I actually never really liked before this film. I just liked the fact that he did a different take on the Joker yeah. and he wasn't compared to Heath. Yeah, I understand that. And I think the biggest issue that he has is that Heath was just the god. Yeah, but Heath set a bar. That's, that's yeah. whacking as whacking Phoenix is probably just about edged him now, but not in my opinion. Yeah. Like I preferred <sighs> Heath, but I get why people preferred whacking Phoenix. Jared Leto, through no issue, I've heard like there's like set rumors of him like getting oh, sending involved, rats, sending rats to people. And... <laughs> he's a weird fella. He's uh, he, he's brilliant. He's brilliant, man. He's, yeah, but apparently, he's... He's, a lot of his scenes were cut from the film as well. Yeah, and I'm thinking that that's going to be one of the biggest issues for it. Um, just it. <laughs> The, the car scene, the um, I've gone through this entire podcast and not criticized one film badly. You I've just destroyed what, this film. I found <laughs> the good in Justice League in Batman vs Superman in all the rubbish, not rubbish, all the rubbishly perceived film. But I cannot defend the. I, I'll defend Harley Quinn, Rick Flag, and. I do dead shot to an extent because I think Will Smith's really good, does it? But as a film, no. Well, I, what I gotta say is on that is I don't think it's the best film ever. I could watch it; it's tolerable, it's enjoyable in scenes. But Enchantress wasn't good as a villain. No. Cara Delevingne isn't that incredible <laughs> yeah. as an actress. Be awful, but I think the team. Wasn't great. Deadshot, as you said, Will Smith was excellent. I like Will Smith. Yep. And Captain Boomerang. Of, yeah, Captain Boomerang. With Deadshot, I'll, I'll add that his <clears throat> motives and his old daughter aspect to him yeah. was good. And it was yeah. really good. That's yeah, he gave a level to his character. Yeah. Um, I said Killer Croc. I, I, I enjoyed his costume. Yeah, you know, he wasn't horrendous. <laughs> oh, compliment. <laughs> uh, then you had Diablo and Katana, who were just, you know, just crap characters. They were crap. Yeah. Very uh, expendable. I mean, I know the Suicide Squad is a team of expendable people. That's what it is. Like, you watch James Gunn's one and everyone dies. You got Blue Polka Dot Man. If you watch that, Polka Dot Man is probably the lowest person on that list you'd like. I mean, he's actually one of the most likable people in the yeah, whole film. Exactly. So it's a crazy you got film. Though. King Shark, who says about three things, but, and he's just class. There's a way to do it right, and James Gunn does it. This film does not exactly because, like, obviously, you had Killer Croc in this, and you had King Shark in that. The comparisons are crazy. Killer Croc's more well known, they did it poorly to a lot of viewers. King Shark, no one really knows, and he was just so funny and so good. Yeah. So, we'll talk about any, that more in depth, obviously, when we talk about that film. Um, so Harley Quinn, obviously, you said is obviously one of the best parts. I think she's one of the best parts of the whole DCU, in my opinion. Yeah, the there's a reason why she's come back in so yes. many films. Margot Robbie's really, really good, and she she's one. She like I said with Gal Gadot, you can't see Wonder Woman. You now look at Harley Quinn, and you can't not see Margot yeah, Robbie. I agree. I'm so they literally they made a Fortnite skin on Margot Robbie's. <laughs> <laughs> and I... <laughs> no, I agree. Um, so obviously, we spoke about. Um, just a bit of going back and forth. Justice League, Joker was in Justice League, obviously. We spoke about. Um, do you feel that's the Joker we should have got in this film? Yeah. Not some GTA <laughs> mobster. The Joker loves chaos. That is what he does. And I yeah. get that. And I get that. But he's not a he's not necessarily a crime boss. Like he has his thugs, he has his gang, you play the Arkham games, yeah, he does. Yeah. But the Joker just loves chaos. He doesn't care about organized crime. Yeah, I know. <laughs> in in the dark actually, he burns the money. He doesn't need the bling. That's true. I've got to admit, Jared Leto is the worst incarnation of the Joker. Yeah. I mean, you he, said the Arkham one as well. Even the game version is better than Jared yeah, Leto. Mark Hamill's so good as the Joker. He's unreal. Yeah, he's brilliant. Okay, I love him in that. Um, yeah, so the last thing I'll probably talk about is. 
what did you think? Oh, I know you hate the entire film. So <laughs> what did you think about the final fight scene against Enchantress? If you can remember it. I, I can barely remember it. Um, let me... It was... It was adequate. It was it was adequate for an awful film. I remember someone, I think my mum bought me the DVD for it once and I was like Fucking throw that away. <laughs> I, I I don't want that. I, don't, I hate it. And I just remember seeing the DVD and it's the cardboard box, the green box, they're all stunning it. Suicide squad with a stupid face in the letter. <laughs> no, <laughs> I just I I, I I hate this film. So obviously, we've established you hate this film. So <laughs> out of ten, I'm intrigued. Minus two. And the only reason why it's not minus ten is because of Harley Quinn. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I want to put my opinion out there and say this is about a six out of ten. It tried its hardest. Had a couple of good moments, a couple of good cast members, but um, is it David Ayer who did this film? Yeah, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> That's our end of the discussion of Suicide Squad. We have one more film to talk about, and that is Shazam. So, next, we're going to talk about Shazam. I just want to put a pointer out there. I mentioned we're going to talk about Aquaman, but that'll be spoke about in the next DC video when we talk about the other three films as well. So stay tuned for that down the line. By the way, Shazam is about Billy Batson, who ends up becoming Shazam partway through the film, and he's played by Zachary Levi. And uh, Asher Angel, he plays the younger version of Billy. So, Matt, what was your thoughts on this film? On the complete flip side to Suicide Squad, this is my favourite DC film. Yeah, positivity. <laughs> I absolutely love this film. I think Shazam isn't a serious character. Yeah, I love it um, for that reason. And I just think they hit home almost everything in this film. It's so good. Do you think there's a trend here? You know, we spoke about Man of Steel being perfect. We skipped a few films, Wonder Woman. We skipped a few films, now Shazam. Standalone films seem to do a lot better than the group yeah. films. So Yeah, you don't, you don't... Because group films are a big thing in the world now, you've got... Obviously, we've got Spider-Man out tomorrow in the UK. You bringing together heroes is the trend. <coughs> yes. But a lot of the time nowadays, that brings to a lot more disappointment than a standard film that's just one hero versus... And that's what... Obviously, Spider-Man film, I'm talking more about Doctor Strange being it than the potential of a Spider-Man. Yes. With these with films you, you can just have one hero absolutely <laughs> and a lot of nowadays you tend to forget that and i think this film is perfect for it because it's just it is it's in its own world it's it's brilliant it's really real really well done this film you mentioned obviously a lot of people want obviously group films and you know more characters in do you think that's because of the expectation of fans wanting yes. to constantly see, you know, see Superman rock mm. up? Because obviously he rocks up later in the film in the like a little cameo scene. Yeah. So do you it's think a silly, it's a silly little cameo, but that's yeah. Yeah, it's because of fan uh, fan expectations, and that's the main reason why this happens. Yeah. And do you think directors need to stop listening to fans in a way and just get on with their own products? I think they do. Um I'm I'm a victim of this myself. I'm fully mm. well going Spider Man tomorrow, wanting to see Daredevil. And Garfield. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm, joking. <laughs> I'm going I'm going to Spider Man tomorrow, wanting to see Daredevil. I am myself part of this problem. Yeah. My issue is if I don't the fit the difference is if I don't see Daredevil, yeah, I'm not gonna be disappointed by the film. Fans will kick off on social media if they don't get what they want to see. And the issue is fans now feel entitled to uh, to what they want to see in these films. Yeah, I think the issue is as well, leaks don't help. Obviously, because right. I haven't seen every leak out there, but obviously, as you said about Spider-Man, you've, we've seen or heard leaks about Matt Murdock and the, the Spider-Man appearing. 
So obviously that goes to the whole DC thing. Of, down home, yeah. Yeah. So that's why people get their hopes up. And if things don't end up happening, people exactly. get annoyed. And so. that's why I think with Shazam, no one leaked anything. Fair enough, it's not one of the biggest characters in the DC universe. Yeah. It was a, it was a nice surprise. And the casting, we'll, we'll talk about the casting, but it's an unreal film. It was like what you said, I mean, the second film isn't even out yet. This is only a little talk on the second one, but that new suit's already been leaked. Yeah. So the newer the films are, the more leaks come out, and that's the issue yeah. with films. But The issue is, yeah, no, 100%. Social media's a big issue, obviously. Um, so what did you think on Billy's, um, like, say, origin story? Like, I liked it. Yeah. Where, where he moves, like, from home to home. Yeah, yeah. He's sort of an outcast. I, I really liked it. And he, the way they do it is that in the film, Billy Batson isn't... He doesn't want to be a hero. He's not necessarily a good kid. Yeah. He Obviously, he does. He beats up them bullies who were, were bullying his friend. He's not... There's nothing too special about him other than when, like, we well, don't think that until he's sat on the train and then the, and then it calls to him. Yeah. <coughs> and then you sort of get the whole new dynamic on the character. And I just, I really like the origin for, for Billy Batson. I think it's quite a unique, like, fair enough, he's not got parents. Oh, shock horror. Yeah. It's like a standard thing to be superhero, but I just think he's a kid who's moved around home to home. Nothing really too special about him. He's just going to school. Yeah, yeah. He's not exactly a genius. There's nothing that stands out about his personality, but he is this. I think it's a very relatable character. Yeah, as you said, there's nothing special about him, and you don't necessarily have to be special to be a superhero. Yeah, exactly, and that's what I love about the film. Yeah. So do you think, obviously... It takes a lot of inspiration from the movie Big. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think that's what a lot of people say coming out of the cinema. Yeah, that's um, why I see when I watch it. Yeah, no, it does take a lot of inspiration from the movie, and I just and I think it is to its own credit that it does. Oh yeah, it's not a negative in any way because I love Big and I love this in yeah. its own way because it does it. It's a superhero version, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, so. The villain, I'm not massive on, I want to say. I'd love Mark Strong as an actor, but yeah. what was your opinions on him? I don't think he suits the villainous type, per se. No, after watching Mark Strong as Merlin and Kingsman... That's the issue, I think. Uh, the villain is very weak in this film. Yes. But you forgive a weak villain because the film just doesn't take itself too seriously. It's, at its, own, it's not... At, the thing about Shazam compared to all the other films is... At, it's at Shazam's pace. Yes. It it's obviously it's got the Superman camera at the end, but it it does it, it doesn't rush anything to to fire out into the DC universe. It takes itself at its own pace. The villain's not great, granted, but it makes up for it in just you could watch that film and have no villain. Oh, and yeah. it'd still be a fantastic watch because it's just a fun film. Yeah, it's just Zachary Levi trying to learn his powers for what, like 20, yeah. 30 minutes at one point, and then he's that, yeah talking to well talking to kids, but he is a kid himself. And he goes back to the orphanage and he's trying yeah. to convince the kids and stuff. It's just a funny film, and Zachary Levi plays it so he's well. Such a good actor. I think that's the first thing I've ever seen him in. And he's, he's just if you've ever seen Tangled, he's Flame Rider. In yeah, Tangled. I've never seen that though. But he's he's just so good, and that like you said to that film that scene in the skate park where he's just where the filming in the can you can, can you fly? And it's just it's what it is. It's what I if I got powers tomorrow, yeah, that's what it'd be. Yeah. And it, that's why I think it's just it's such a grounded film. Yeah, and I think that's the first time a superhero's done that since Tobey Maguire's Spider Man. You know, he's on the yeah. uh, on the roof where he's like trying to test his um, the web and yeah. stuff. Uh, yeah. It proper brought us back to what it would be if we became a superhero. Because yeah. you got all these, like, you got Iron Man who's a genius who just fly out and he knows what to yeah. do. Four knows what to do. Everyone knows what to do nowadays. I guess actually Doctor Strange I'll give an exception to, which I'll always give an exception to because he learns his powers. Yes. Um, but I just, it's just, it's, it's a fun <laughs> film. He's learning more about himself throughout it. At the end, he has, he gets the Shazam family. And surprisingly, 
and actually it's not surprising that this film is actually getting a sequel. Yes. And obviously his villainous counterpart is getting his own franchise. Yeah, which is amazing because they're actually building up a proper franchise. It's That's how it's meant to be done. So I'm hoping this will be the beginning of something big for the DC universe. Yeah. You get like I said, you got Shazam sequel, you got Black Adam. We'll probably get a Black Adam two or they'll that, cross over to yeah. Shazam three or whatever. That's what Zack Snyder should have done. He should have they should have had Superman. A Superman sequel, a Batman film, yep. Superman versus Batman. But you, now you got Shazam, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, Black <coughs> Adam, and then they'll meet. You, exactly. You need to branch it off before you bring it together. And that's where the, that, throughout this whole podcast, that's where DC has struggled. Yeah, because it could have been so easy to chuck Black Adam into Fury of Gods and be yeah. like, oh, Black Adam's here, but yeah. why? We've not had any exactly. backstory. Why is he here? What do you want? This, that, the other. Exactly. So the next question I want to ask is obviously at the end, all the Shazam family sitting in the thrones, there's one seat left. I'm not a massive Shazam comic person. Is that for Black Adam? Do you think it's for Black Adam? I think in the long run, it's, it's going to... Black Adam is an anti-hero in the long, in the main scheme of things. Yeah. Obviously, you have got the empty seat, which is a bit of a tease. I think it is going to be. Um, he's going to start out as a villain. Yes, of course. Um, all, everything that Dwayne Johnson's been posting about it. Yeah, the hierarchy is changing. And hierarchy of power is changing. Yeah. In the Black Adam short clip from Fandome, he is villainous. He he, he destroys that guy. Oh, God, yeah, um, when he picks him up. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I think they're going to find a way to bring it back to the good side and the I'm just hoping this can recover the extended universe. And obviously, I want in the future I want to see Black Adam with with Superman, and I I want that Superman to be Henry Cavill. Yes, I don't want that to change. But I just that's why I love this Shazam because they're doing it at its own pace. It's it's right. They're not rushing into firing it into the big leagues. Like we said, the Superman cameo at the end, but it's a silly cameo because his mate wants to see Superman. Yeah, and now, yeah. I mean, that works in a way because, like, the film was very good. The film was tidy. You've chucked in an, an Easter egg for DC fans. Yeah, which exactly. doesn't compromise the movie as well. So it's you like, don't even see his face. You just see the Superman. Yeah, you could have, yeah. I think that's the issue as well. It's like because they're having issues with Cavill. It's like if you put Cavill in there, it would have been so much better. But, yeah, you know, it's, there's no proof it is him. So it's an external factor that contributes to that. So I'll let it off. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. I want it to be Henry Cavill. Yeah, same. I want to see Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam and Zachary Levi Shazam, and I want to see Henry. Cavill. I want to see them all unite. Yeah, just go at your own pace. And I think Shazam's a good one to end this video on because it's what it's meant. It's the future, and I think yeah. that's what it. And I, just take it out that pace, and you'll be yeah. fine. Exactly. I think Shazam is the next film to come out. No, it's not. It's 2023, isn't it? Yeah, Shazam but, 2023. Uh, well, no, Batman the... first. Oh, yeah. So I'm hoping Batman is the film that paves the way for the future and tidies everything up with The Flash and Shazam, as we discussed. So yeah. we can only hope. Um, so anything else you want to add on Shazam? No, other than Zachary Levi, is really good. Oh, yeah. And what did you think on his suit? I love it. <laughs> yeah. I, I always say with Superman, <laughs> it's a cheesy suit. It works though, so, doesn't it? On Zachary, yeah, they, they make a mockery out of the suit being stupid. Yeah, I agree. Um, you got a, when you got a superhero that is he shouts at Shazam to, yes. to get his powers, and you make a film that works with a stupid costume with a white cape that works. Yeah, we can actually think about hit it. the nail on this yeah. film shouldn't work. This film should not work. Yeah. But it does, and it works better than any other DC film. They've hit the nail on the head with the casting. They, all, they like you said in the previous talk, they do, they do tend to hit it on the head with the casting. DC. Yeah, the casting. The only person I look back on is Jesse Eisenberg. He's the yeah. only person I can think of, not because yeah. he was a bad actor. He just doesn't. He wasn't meant to play Lex Luthor. I don't think. No. So, um, so that's about it for our discussion on the six films we've mentioned. Matt, to finish off, what are your What's your ranking for the six films? So I'll go Shazam Top. Yes. Um, I, then I will go Man of Steel. Yes. Then I'll go Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. Then I'll go with Snyder Cut. 
then I'll go with Dawn of Justice. And then suicide. And then, then no, 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 then Uh-oh. I'll go with the, the original, <laughs> the original Justice League. And that's it. I'm not talking about that. Oh, <laughs> we don't even make the list. <laughs> <laughs> um, so mine would be uh, Man of Steel, Shazam, Snyder Cut, Wonder Woman, Batman v Superman. Suicide Squad Justice League. <laughs> That's my order. <laughs> um, so, obviously, we have four more films to talk about in the next DC one I mentioned. We have Aquaman, Birds of Prey, the new Suicide Squad, done by James Gunn, and we have Wonder Woman 2. Yes, that's going to be great to talk about. But yeah, there's a lot more DC films I've just coming out, so we'll continue the series as we talk about more. If you want to see anything else we want to talk about, we have Spider-Man and Hawkeye in the next one well, of the next episodes. We have Star Wars coming up, and we have The Witcher also in the plans yeah. to talk about. So plenty of discussions to come, and I hope you look forward to them. I hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe. I've been one of your co-hosts, Adam, and my other co-hosts, Matt. Take care for now, and goodbye.